Let me ask everyone a question. What happens when a game that gets totally inconsistent on the difficulty from going easier than a drunken slut to harder than Walt Disney's frozen asshole, then you toss in a generous amount of rules designed to fuck you harder than a pissed off raping tiger, then season it with a totally unforgiving mistake system that brings back the memories of your stepdad locking you naked in the closet for getting a C on your math test, then blindfolding you and making you say hi to all of his friends. Memory repressed. Well, anyway, you frost it all up with a boredom level that's up there with Chinese water torture, and what do you get? Where in time is Carmen Sandy fucking Ago? So the game starts somewhere in San Francisco. Why the fuck did they say that? How many cities are named San Francisco? Why can't they just say San Francisco and end it? Why do they have to make it sound all mysterious? And trust me, the real mystery will be how you can play this piece of shit game for more than a goddamn minute. Okay, so you start out in the elevator and you point and click and trust me, the game does not get any better. So you start off with no fucking idea where to go. Uh, if you walk out the door that I'm at right now, it'll reset the fucking game. Why do some programmers feel the need to put an in-game reset that's why the fucking council has a fucking reset button. So after about five minutes of trial and error trying to find where the fuck you need to go, you'll end up at the personnel office. I'm serious. All the other floors in this building are useless unless you want to deal with a crappy animation room. Why are these rooms in the game? If they serve no fucking purpose, why can't the fucking game start you off at the fucking personnel desks? Anyway... You'll end up entering your name, or just one letter, and the game will finally start. So you'll get a message that something as large as the Great Wall of China, or something as stupid as Salvador's Dolly's mustache, has been stolen. So, yeah, pretty stupid thefts all the way around. Then the chief will give you a set amount of time to investigate the crime and bring in the crook. Now let's talk about the time allotment. It's completely random. You get a different amount of time to solve a case, but the bullshit you have to go through to solve the damn thing is the exact same. Wait, wait, what? Yeah, in this game, you get a random amount of time to solve the same amount of shit. Imagine if in Mario, you had to do World 4-1, but one time you got four minutes to do it, and the next time you got 30 seconds to do it, and it's the exact same level. That'd be real fucking fair, wouldn't it? Uh, well, beer will take this pain away. So far, this game is like getting a hand job from Megan Fox, all the while she whips your nuts with a car antenna. I mean, if you didn't already know this game was originally a PBS game show, you might think it'd be cool. I mean, look at the cover. Then, you'd get it home from the video store and find out that this pile of shit has just basically ruined your weekend. I mean, the graphics and action in this game could have easily been on the NES or hell, even the Commodore 64. I mean, this is one step above a fucking text-based game. I mean, Asteroids, which was programmed 20 years before this game, had more movement and action than this. The only time you get any animation at all is when you actually catch a crook and you get this stupid little running sequence and they get caught by a robot. I actually got more action and adventure out of Elmo's fucking letter adventure. Now, how do you catch a crook? Well, first you need some clues, right? Well, how do you get the fucking clues? Well... We get the gender right of the bad from the chief, but of course you're going to need more than that to solve the case. Well, you need to going to either talk to the witness or informant, or in most cases, both. Both of them will give you clues on where to go next, and hopefully a clue to the person's identity. Oh, and I almost forgot. The order and what clues you get are completely random in this pile of jellyfish juice. The clues range from the perpetrator's hair, eye color, to their favorite author or artist. And getting the artist and authors can be a real pain in the ass. Remember what I said about the clues being in random order? Well, that wouldn't be such a problem if there wasn't a fucking time limit. See, if the chief wants to be a dick-hungry cocksucker, he can give you 
very little time that basically makes you screwed from the get-go. Especially since every single action in this game usually takes at least two fucking hours. First, you're going to talk to a witness and he'll give you a clue on where to go next. Then you're probably going to have to talk to the informant. You have to talk to at least both of these because they may give you a, one of the five clues you need to solve the case and bring this person in. Now, once again, if you can't figure out where to go, which is a lot, you have to use your scanner. Now, if you do all three of these, that takes a total of five hours off your fucking time. And in half the time, that means you're already dead because time traveling alone takes three fucking hours off the clock. Okay, while the beer is keeping the pain of this game down, I just have one simple fucking question to the makers of this game. Who the fuck did you make this for? I'm a history buff, okay? I don't know half the shit in this game. Was this for kids? History professors? The keeper of the endless tome? Zombie fucking Jesus? Who did you make this piece of shit for? Do the makers of this game want to see people so desperate to finish the game that they fuck a history professor for the answers? Plus, to top it all off, you cannot make a single mistake or you're fucked six ways from Sunday. I have never once gotten enough time to actually be able to go to a wrong time period, get back to the right one, and then go to the right one. That is, if you're lucky enough to even be able to go back to the proper time period. Most of the time, if you fuck up, this game will send you hurtling through time until your time expires. If, by some minor miracle, you actually get to the fourth screen with enough time to spare, you can now actually catch the crook, but you better have at least five hours because you have to talk to the witness the informant and do a stupid fucking scan you know that five hours of bullshit because if your time runs out even if you're on the final thing and you're cornering the guy if your time runs out he goes away scot-free then guess what after you catch him you get that stupid little animation then you're just out of the next case little congratulations memo got it what a pile of fucking shit. The only small mercy in this game is a password system that lets you start from where you were and the fact that you can't actually die in this fucking game. However, taking a gun to your head because of playing this game too long is a very real possibility. That's it. That is all I can take of this Sunday of shit with monkey splooge on top. This game has to be the unfunnest piece of shit I have ever played in my life. This isn't even a game, okay? It's a fucking history lesson. Yeah, remember growing up? That's what you wanted to do with your Saturday from away from school? Yeah, take a fucking history lesson. But this isn't even a kid's history lesson. This game could give the fucking History Channel a run for its money. But at least the History Channel makes history entertaining. And that's a hell of a lot more than I can say for this pile of rat vomit. The worst part outside of the boredom is the fact that the rules in this game bend worse than a zombie's dick. That's it. Fuck this game and fuck you, Carmen San Diego. But wait. If memory serves, Carmen San Diego has black hair. Now, Gina Gershon and Jennifer Tilly both had black hair in the movie Bound. The goth chick in horror films usually has black hair, and she usually gets the lesbian scene in the movie. Hell, Zeno is a lesbian for the whole damn series. That means... There must be lesbian photos of Carmen San Diego somewhere. Yeah. I'm just going to do a quick little Google search here and... Nothing! So, they are forbidden. Every rule, especially the sacred rules, are meant to be broken. The alternate world? What the fuck is that crocodile jizz about? Find the alternate world for fuck's sakes, it'd be easier to find a way to, for Paula Dean to cook me something healthy.
by the Jolly Milkman's dick. I think I've got it. Look for where the white angel meets the rock and you will find your formula buried in the dirt. alternate world. Jesus. Okay, I don't got that long. Alright. Okay. Got the name. Paper out here. Okay. Starting to head back to Are you fucking kidding me? She's the fucking gatekeeper. I suppose time to track her down. So he's getting close to finding the lost lesbian photos of Carmen Sandiego? Don't worry, I'll protect them.